If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own first before listening on. Our first step in solving this question is to graph the four given functions. So here is a sketch of those four curves and we have color coded them and supplied the key to each graph in their respective color on the side here. We've gone ahead and drawn a representative rectangle as well, though admittedly that's not necessarily important in solving the question. What we really need is the formula that gives us the area between two curves, so let's take a look at that. So here's the formula from the textbook. It tells us to integrate from a to b f of x minus g of x with respect to x. Now, it might be simpler to think of this f of x minus g of x as being the top function subtracted by the bottom function. And that's usually an easier way to represent the area between curves. So if we look at this shaded region in gray, whose area we're trying to calculate, we can see that it's marked off by a top function that is colored in blue, and that happens to be this function right here. And then it's also marked off by this bottom function underneath it, and that happens to be the red function, which is defined by y equals sine of x. So we know that y equals x will be the top function, and then the y equals sine of x will be the bottom. So when we set up our area expression, we can integrate the top function, which is x, and then subtract the bottom function, which is sine of x. And we're going to be integrating with respect to x. Now we also need our limits of integration, and those are the x values between which our area lies. So we can see that between this x value right there and between this x value right there, that is the region that bounds the area we're trying to calculate. And of course those two x values were given to us. If we notice the color here, this is the green function and the green function was given as x equals pi over 2. So that's the x value right there. And then over here we have the orange function which was given to us as x equals pi. So that means we're going to be integrating between the x values of pi over 2 and pi. We can include those in our integral. Notice pi over 2 goes on the bottom because it's the smaller value. So now we're set to integrate this expression. And of course the integral of x is going to be x to the power of 2 divided by 2. And we compute that by taking this exponent, which is a 1, adding 1 to make it 2, and then dividing by that new exponent of 2. And of course the integral of the sine of x is negative cosine of x. And since we're subtracting a negative, we can actually back up and just call that the sum of cosine x, or plus cosine x. And then we're going to be integrating between pi over 2 and pi, as noted earlier. Now of course, to proceed, we have to take the upper limit of integration and plug it in. And then after that, we'll take the lower limit of integration and plug that in, and then we'll subtract those two quantities. So let's set that up. We can next simplify a little bit. So in the first parentheses, we're going to have pi squared over 2. And then the cosine of pi can be computed just from memory, or we can look at the cosine curve over here. And we can see that at the value of pi, the cosine is equal to negative 1. So we're going to have plus negative 1 or just minus 1. And then over here, we're going to subtract. Now, we've got to be careful with this pi over 2 squared. That's equivalent to pi over 2 times pi over 2. And if we multiply the numerators, we get pi squared. And then multiply the denominators, we get 4. So here we're going to have pi squared over 4. And that's still divided by 2. So we'll simplify that in a second. And then we're going to add the cosine of pi over 2. We can see from the graph over here that at pi over 2, the cosine is equal to 0. So we can fill that in. Now let's simplify pi squared over 4 over 2. So one way of approaching that is knowing that pi squared over 4 over 2 can be represented by putting a 1 underneath the 2. So in this case we're going to have a fraction divided by another fraction. And you may have learned something called keep change flip, where we keep the first fraction, we change this division sign to multiplication, and then we flip the second fraction to 1 over 2. So that's going to end up becoming pi squared over 8. So then we can essentially drop the parentheses, and we're going to combine the like terms that have the pi squareds in them. We'll need to find a common denominator, so let's multiply this denominator by 4 as well as the numerator. 
So that gives us 4 pi squared minus 1 pi squared, which of course is going to be 3 pi squared over the common denominator. And then we still have this minus 1. So we can tack that on as well. And this would be an appropriate way to represent the final answer. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click thumbs up and also subscribe so you can stay tuned for similar videos. You're welcome to send in your own question to the email address that's displayed on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.